Hello, welcome to HITC Sport. Alright, usually most players seem to like their manager, right? Of course they do. They're the ones giving them their chance, the ones playing them in the Premier League on a regular basis. The key to surviving in this league is to get on with your manager. But as that is not the case for a lot of Premier League teams, let's go through every Premier League club and find one player who probably hates their current manager with a burning passion. Whether it be for not giving them enough games or constantly criticizing them in the press, let's just take a look at what one player most likely hates. And I do heavily stress that word, hates their current current manager and probably go to sleep every night just praying that their owner gives them the sack. Right, let's go. Arsenal of Runar, Alex Runarsson. Yeah, meet Arsenal's very own version of Loris Karius, a guy who blew his big moment on the first team and instead of being given a confidence boost by his manager during his hour of need, he instead gets tossed back into the attic. Listen, I would understand that this guy was a teenage child, but no, no, Runarsson turns 27 next season. He arrived in the summer from Dion as backup goalie to Bernd Leno and then gets picked for the EFL Cup quarterfinal with Man City. Good Christ, the man probably had his relatives huddled around a telly out in Iceland. All need to see him then demonstrate the composure of an epileptic swan. So yeah, the man was getting death threats on Twitter. I mean, I say death threats. I, I don't really think 11-year-old Pinaldo merchants are really going to do much damage with a goddamn pencil case. Anyway, instead of Arteta showing him some support and backing the goalie, he just went out and replaced him with Matt Ryan from Brighton, shoving him back down to third-choice goalie who doesn't even make the squad for match days anymore. Poor old Runar. Aston Villa, Neil Taylor. I would say I feel bad for Neil Taylor growing rusty in the villa basement, but then I remember he nearly turned Seamus Coleman's leg into wet cottage pie. Listen, when Taylor was at Swansea, he was seen as arguably one of the most underrated left backs in the league. Good Christ, the man was representing his nation in the 2012 Olympics. But Dean Smith has very quickly decided he's a left back who can't defend. Good Christ, he's been given just one game this season. This is a former Olympian spending his early 30s watching Matt Target from the bench. Oh, he must secretly feel like chucking Smith in front of traffic. Brighton Matt Ryan. Yeah, I realize Matt Ryan is at Arsenal now, but hey, he's still officially a Brighton player. And considering Graham Potter very really quickly made his Aussie number one a bench warmer in favour of a former Forest Green Rovers number one, yeah, he must be pretty annoyed. Burnley, nobody. Okay, to be fair, Sean Dyche is the entire Burnley squad in harmony. I really don't think any member of that squad has a bad thing to say about the guy, so, um, moving on. Chelsea, Ben Chilwell. Ben Chilwell is having such a confusing season. Under Frank Lampard, this guy was a £50 million Chelsea signing, and he started with a bang with a goal and an assist and a clean sheet in his debut. The man was tipped to emulate Ashley Cole, and honestly, it was one of Chelsea's best players before Christmas. But I'm not sure if he spat on Thomas Tuchel's bowl of moussey in the canteen, or maybe he accidentally backed over his cat. But the German has immediately dumped him to the bench, replacing him with Marcus Alonso, a guy who was so out of the picture under Lampard, he might as well have spent six months drinking tea on a Barbados beach, and nobody would have missed him. So considering Tuchel is attempting to smother Chilwell's dream move, and strangling the life out of his Euro 2021 ambitions, oh, he must pray every night for that man to step in front of an oncoming bus. Chris the Palace, Michi Bacuay. Listen, Michi Bacuay is not a child anymore, he's 27, he's at the peak of his powers, and probably wants to start realising his potential before he turns 30. I honestly believe, if given a proper chance, this former 33 million pound Chelsea signing has the potential to score 15 goals a season in this league. But yeah, Roy Hodgson clearly isn't impressed, mostly lets him rot on the bench, never gives him a true run of games on the team. Honestly, the Belgian must despise the old man with every burning fibre of his body. Everton, Fabian Delph. If you told Fabian Delph five years ago when he was taking orders from Tim Sherwood that he'd soon be managed by both Pep Guardiola and Carlo Ancelotti, oh, he'd probably instantly soil himself. But no, yes, he's had his injuries, but clearly Ancelotti doesn't want to fit him into his plans. Good Christ, he started just one league game this season. He's been fit for a month, and yet hasn't been given a minute of action since the 5th of December. The guy who left the Etihad for first team football had to squeeze his way back into the England squad. Not spent his twilight years watching Tom Davies steal his spot, full of Alexander Mitrovic. Yeah, pretty simple here. In Alexander Mitrovic's own head, he's probably one of the most lethal centre forwards in Europe. And yet Scott Parker has done his level best to crush his confidence with a hammer, repeatedly dropping him to the bench. He must be sick to the teeth. Leeds Kiko Casilla. Listen, as a former Real Madrid shot stopper, I can only assume Kiko Casilla has an ego the size of a flat screen TV. And so a 34 year old Champions League winner, who's played for Spain and helped the Leeds team earn promotion last season. He's been rewarded by told to go and wait on the bench, watching a 20 year old child steal his place. Good Christ, when Ilan Melier was born, Casilla was joining the biggest club on planet Earth. And so being told to act as a second fiddle for a guy unable to yet grow hair in his face, it's pretty degrading. Leicester Danny Ward. Listen, no real Leicester City player seems to despise Brendan Rodgers. Everyone seems to be moving on the same page. But maybe Danny Ward. This guy's a talented 27 year old goalie who should be Wales number one by now, ahead of the Euro. 
titles, but his career has mostly been swallowed whole by Brendan Rodgers. He never played him well at Liverpool, and again, despite a £12 million price tag, he keeps ignoring him at Leicester. No, clearly three years after his move, he's still waiting to make his Premier League debut for the club. Honestly, Rodgers has chucked six years of this guy's career into a dusty attic. Liverpool, Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain. Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain is the forgotten man at Anfield, a guy who wanted to emulate Stevie G for both club and country, and yet injuries have massively set him back. But lads, he's been fit since mid-December, and Klopp has barely given him a look in. He's now just an impact sub off the bench. To be fair, he did start both defeats against Southampton and Burnley before being yanked off after 57 minutes, but still, this guy's watching Jordan Shaqiri get more game time in the middle of an injury crisis, with him just being left to rot on the bench. At 27 years of age, and when his Euro 2021 hopes lying face down on a ditch, he must be pretty gutted. Man City, Ferran Torres. Yep, again, Ferran Torres right now must be pretty disgusted. After a decent start for Man City, the guy grabbed a few goals by November, he smashed in the hatchet for Spain in the 6 0 topic of Germany, which elevated him to European stardom. But now, Guardiola's consistently held him back. In 2021, he's just started just one league match, and it's only made it off the bench once in his last five games. This should have been a season, replacing Leroy Sané, smashing him 20 goals a season. But now, now even a spot with Spain is under threat. Man United, Donny van der Beek. Donny van der Beek must be so confused. What was the point of Odegaard Solskjaer signing him when he clearly doesn't want to use him? He hasn't started a Premier League match since November and has failed to make it off the bench 11 times this season. That's 11 match days when the fella didn't even need to have a shower after the match. That shouldn't be for a former Ajax starter. A guy Real Madrid tried to sign. It's official. Oli is choking the life and potential out of this man's career. He's going to wake up one morning and realise he's just been turned into the next Anderson, Newcastle and Maddie Longstaff. Steve Bruce isn't a massively popular figure at Newcastle right now anyway, but good Christ, Maddie Longstaff in particular must be at his wit's end. He was given a run of games over the Christmas period and was actually one of the best players on the pitch each time, doing his best to tightly recycle possession in midfield. And yet, he's just sat out the last seven matches. He turns 21 next month. He's not a teenage child. This guy exploded out of the scene last season, scoring the winner against Manchester United, playing alongside his brother in midfield. That looked like the start of a Longstaff dynasty. Honestly, Matty Longstaff, this guy turned out a lucrative big money deal in Italy last summer, holding on to the dream of, you know, realising his potential at his boyhood club, only to be told by a supposed Jordy who once sought employment at Sunderland for Christ's sake, that he's not good enough. And even further than that, not only has Bruce continued to play with the boys' emotions, he's only gone out and signed Joe Willock to play in midfield for six months, with the club clearly adopting a policy of nurturing and developing other clubs' young talent rather than their own. Honestly, that's a type of logic that might make sense to a lobotomized pigeon, but to most people that is utter wet nonsense. Sheffield United Rain Brewster. Well, it is pretty simple. Rain Brewster arrived at Sheffield United with a massive chunk of hype, but chose Bramall Lane for guaranteed first team football, and he can't even manage that. Chris Wilder has mostly chucked him to the bench, meaning Brewster is about to be sentenced back to the championship. And just like with Dominic Solanke at Bournemouth last season, it doesn't matter if you're an underage superstar with a massive price tag. If you're stuffed to the bench for a relegated club, nobody's gonna touch you with a six foot pole. Southampton, Fraser Forster. Oh, Fraser. Fraser Forster should have just stayed in Scotland with Celtic. Yeah, he returned to Southampton, and yes, he accepted being number two, but he was given a chance and goal against the current champions in January, and he kept a clean sheet in a 1-0 win. The last time the Saints won a goddamn match, by the way, and mainly though, he was spat back to the bench, and he's watched Alex McCarthy lose six games in a row, including one match where he conceded nine. Considering Ralph Hasnuttle binned Angus Gunn for conceding a nine against Leicester, then Forster, after a clean sheet against Liverpool, he might have expected to be given that chance. But no, not at all. And for a guy who cleaned up in Celtic, a guy he used to regularly feature in England squads, this must be pretty damn demoralising. That's the only way Alex McCarthy was ever given a shot. So it seems the fair thing to do would have been to trust Forster. And it's not as if this goalie is some unproven kid who might have reflexes of a busted toaster. No, no, where's the respect for a man who used to be one of the most impressive goalkeepers in the Premier League? And who honestly chucked in one of the best ever shot stopping displays ever seen in a, by a Southampton keeper against Arsenal in 2015. Come on, Ralph, where is the respect? Tottenham Deli Ali. Mourinho can talk up Deli Ali now if you want, but I'm pretty sure the damage is done and Ali despises him. Ali was Pochettino's golden boy and one of the first names on the team sheet at Spurs, but now that Jose has Luke Shaw him in the press and surely cost him an international tournament this summer with England, Ali has essentially lost one year of his career to the bench and must secretly be praying for Jose to get the sack. West Brom, Branislav Ivanovic. Pretty simple here. Branislav Ivanovic hasn't played a single minute of football under Big Sam Allardyce since the 2nd of January and now he can't even make the squad. Not a very dignified end for a former Premier League champion. West Ham, Mark Noble. As a lifelong West Ham fan, Mark Noble probably loves David Moyes for what he's done to the club, but as a proud captain of West Ham, that had been given zero starts since the opening day of the season, just reduced to a 20 minute impact sub cameos, and never been given a chance to redeem himself after the loss to Newcastle, he must be pretty damn furious. Wolves, Morgan Gibbs White. Remember when Morgan Gibbs White was held up as the next great superpower in English football? That was in 2018, by the way. He probably thought he was nailed on for Euro 2020. 
No, no Nespirito Santo is instead benched in, alone near the Swansea, only to recall him and then bench him some more. Poor old Morgan, he must feel like ripping Santos's beard clean off his chin. Anyway, that's it. Let me know in the comments below. What do you think? What players at each Premier League club do you think probably despise their manager? Which ones are having their careers absolutely dragged through a ditch? Let me know in the comments section below. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And as always, I'll talk to you in a while.